A typical afternoon on the Oregon coast. Fishermen bringing in the day's catch. <laughs> Families playing in the sand. They aren't worrying about the threat of the big one. But when it happens, the Oregon coast will see catastrophic levels of devastation. Tom Horning is a geologist and city councilor in Seaside. How often, Tom, do you think about the threat of earthquakes and tsunamis here? Every day for my personal lifestyle issues, and I think about it for the community lifestyle issues. More than 30,000 Oregonians like Tom live in the tsunami inundation zone. And during the tourist season, some 60,000 extra people could be at the Oregon coast. While it's impossible to predict exact numbers, experts say Seaside is likely to have the most casualties, partly because it's so flat. When the wave hits, it could be anywhere from 25 to 55 feet high. Some estimates even have it reaching 100 feet. You do not want to be in that water. People don't just drown. They are frequently crushed and ground up by lumber and all this material that gets picked up by the water and transported along with it. Water doing 20 miles an hour that hits you with a 10,000 pound log is going to do some serious damage. People will have about 20 minutes from the time the earth starts shaking before that tsunami hits. We drove one of the evacuation routes, marked with painted symbols on the street. It's about a mile and a half from 12th Avenue near the beach to high ground. But when faced with a real tsunami, you won't want to drive. It'll be the mother of all traffic jams. You can't make it. And many coastal bridges, including those holding up Highway 101, are expected to fail. We need to have evacuation routes that are reliable and do not collapse during the earthquake. And since Seaside has two major rivers running parallel to the beach north-south, if those bridges were to fall down during the earthquakes, people would be trapped and there wouldn't be enough time to avoid the tsunami. Tom says the city has four bridges that could withstand a severe earthquake but there are seven more waiting. We've been trying to fix one particular bridge for 10 years. We've been waiting a long time. And that's just for one bridge. We've got seven. Our bridges are very vulnerable. Oregon's Department of Transportation is very frank about the state's infrastructure. It's not very prepared at all. If we had the earthquake today, you would see virtually every route in Western Oregon would be compromised. By their numbers, 138 bridges need to be completely replaced. Close to 50 of those are on the coast. More than 500 bridges need to be rehabilitated or retrofitted. And there are more than a thousand landslide and rockfall dangers to be dealt with. It's been relatively recent that we've discovered this Cascadia earthquake. So many of our bridges predate that discovery. Back to the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, much of the interstate was built during that time and the bridges are from that era and it wasn't until the 80s into the 90s before we began to appreciate the magnitude of this earthquake, and so we've been playing catch-up since then to prepare our bridges. Deputy Director Paul Mather says the agency has a five-phase plan, but coastal highways and bridges don't start showing up until phase two, and Seaside doesn't hit until phase four. Instead, interstates and highways leading to the Redmond Airport take priority. Redmond Airport was chosen because of its location away from the event and the damage that's going to happen on the coast in a place that's large enough to handle our response efforts. The phases build out from there. But based on the available funding, ODOT says it will be decades before they are complete. In case we don't have 50 years or longer before the big one hits, Tom has been urging the Seaside City Council to increase the room tax to pay for new bridges. This is the best tax you could ever come up with. It should, it, people should be demanding it. So far, no dice. If the council doesn't change its mind, Tom says a ballot initiative may be in order. If the citizens don't want to do it, that's fine. They made the ultimate decision. They can suffer the ultimate consequences. It's like a terrible crime, you know. I, I, I think that we have enough momentum at the uh, Tsunami Advisory Group to make this thing happen. In the meantime, he says he is optimistic about preparedness among coastal communities. There's a pretty deep understanding on the part of the public that there is an earthquake and tsunami hazard at the coast. 